Hello and welcome once again to The Blueprints. This is Canada's Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmail, Member of Parliament for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock, with new content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We ask that you like, comment, subscribe, share this program. If you can't listen or watch the program in its entirety right this second, download it and listen to it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. Great show, as always, lined up for you. This week, we're talking about two items that happened last week and a few other things as well. One in particular, a minor to medium-sized victory regarding firearms. The other, a very big negative regarding internet censorship. For all you free speech-loving enthusiasts out there, us included, this is where it's going to hurt. So to talk about that, we have Warren Steinley, Member of Parliament for Regina. Lou Van here to join us to talk about it. He's been on the show before. It's been a while, but good to have you back on. Thank you very much, Jamie. Always a pleasure to be here and looking forward to talking about, and I think it's a bit bigger of a win for, the, for, for guns and for our, our hunters and our farmers that need to have these rifles. I think it's a big win for us, and I'm pretty happy to have a conservative victory already in 2023. Absolutely. So if it uh, wasn't for your riding name, if nobody caught that, I don't know what province you're from, but uh, we have a new addition to the studio, the Saskatchewan flag. Good of you to bring that. Um, yeah, so last week, in case you missed it, but if anyone owns a firearm legally and, and likes to shoot, um, this is something you've probably already heard already. The government backed off on some of its more contentious firearms issues, really going after those used by hunters and sports shooters and kind of riled up and woke up people that might not have been paying attention to this because Bill C-21 is still in effect, uh, something else we have to work on. So a, a bit of good news, but still more work to be done. Absolutely. The good news is, is they pulled the amendments that made a lot of the legal firearms owners that they're going to make them into criminals, which we don't want. And the biggest thing about Bill C-21 is it's just window dressing. Mm -hmm. It's not going to really address the issues that the Liberals are saying it will. It's not going to address violent crime that's been up 32%. It's not going to address gun uh, criminal activity by gangsters that's up 90% under this government. So they're really just trying to go after legal firearm owners and not fix the salient issue, which is those illegal guns coming across the border, which we all know that's where we're going to have to put our efforts, but we can leave our legal firearm owners alone. Well, it, it's just a, it seems to be a false sense of security that the government seems to play with the emotions and the fears, legitimate fears that some people have, especially in areas in municipalities where some of these shootings are taking place, where some of these increased gang crimes are taking place. People are legitimately concerned. So this government comes along and says, hey, we're going to ban guns. We're going to get rid of these firearms. And, and at the end of the day, you're no, you're no safer. You're no safer. And it's even worse than that. On their Bill C-75, they're actually reducing penalties for people that are committing crimes with guns. So on one hand, they're saying they want to protect you more. But on the other hand, they're letting some of these people go to house arrest and go back into the neighborhoods in which they're terrorizing them. So Bill C-75, as, as Warren did point out, reduced the severity of some sentences for violent refeed offenders in, in most cases. So yes, you can actually use a firearm and get house arrest in a proceed of a crime, which is absolutely incredible. So I think what we're seeing too in our communities, we want to talk about bail, re bail reform because uh, pretty much I believe every premier in this country, mm -hmm. territorial leader, has signed a letter to the prime minister saying the measures that the prime minister put in place are not working. We have repeat offenders going out and committing crimes. They should be behind bars for longer periods of time. And the government has weakened those to the point where these criminals just have a revolving door. They just go right back out. And we've seen the police officer that was fatally shot in Ontario just a few weeks ago in a very tragic situation. That individual was out on bail. So this is, this is a reoccurring thing that's happening over and over again. We can go on to the incidents in Toronto as well. Yeah, and we see a, a violent offender uh, the lawyer in Quebec said, the prosecutor said, if it wasn't for these new laws, that person would be behind bars. Mm -hmm. So you're hearing it just from everyday Canadians. And I think when you walk down the street and you ask, after eight years of Justin Trudeau being in power and the Liberals being in power, no one feels safer on their streets. I think that's something that really resonates with people, everyday Canadians, and the fact that they're seeing this government try and cherry pick a stat here and there and bring forward laws that aren't in essence, making their, their community safer. So that's what happened with Bill C-21 and the gun, uh, firearm amendments. That's what happened with Bill C-75 and reducing jail time and reducing mm -hmm. bails for repeat offenders. Lots of these offenders that we have seen taking our police officers' lives 
have been out on bail after numerous serious violent offenses with guns. And those are something that we need to tackle these issues so that we can make our Canadians, the first job of any government is to have their Canadians feel safe, and the Liberals under Trudeau have failed over eight years in that priority. And you can understand why people are getting frustrated, right? They're being asked to pay more taxes. Everything's going up, everything's more expensive, and the services that they're receiving aren't getting any better. In fact, it's getting worse in many places. And, and so people are getting a bit anxious, a bit you know, uneasy about what is happening in this country because they are expected to pay more. And then when people try to relocate to find a, a different community to live in or somewhere else, they're, they're almost looked down upon by the Liberal. How dare you move out and, and try to find a better place to live? Yeah, well, I think our leader, Pierre Poya, has said it perfectly. Is you don't have to be upset that people are mad. You should ask why they are getting so mad. Yep. Why is there that anger out there? And it's because people do feel let down. You can't get a passport. You, you get to an airport now and you very rarely get to where you want to go on time anymore. So people are feeling more and more let down by this government. And instead of taking that into consideration and trying to fix the problems that Trudeau has created over the last eight years, he's just compounding those problems again with poor legislation. We could talk about Bill C-11 as well, the yep. censorship bill for the internet. Like Instead of listening to why people are mad, he's trying to shut it down so people that are of a different opinion from the Liberal government can't even have their say anymore. Well, what becomes hate speech, right? What does the gov anything against the government? What does the government not like? Well, that's hate speech, right? They, they put these filters on and pick and choose what you want to see. And, and this is what has been great about the internet, right? This has been a great thing that new things keep popping up every single day. There's a wide variety of things that people can watch or listen to that give them the best variety. And, and it's up to industry itself if they want to compete to try to match or emulate what's going on in order to get that viewership or listenership back. And, and, and by the government sticking its fingers into this pot, you're going to actually slow down this creativity because viewers and listeners are going to get a bunch of stuff that the government says is okay or what they should be listening to, but might not actually be the taste of that individual. Well, you heard from many content creators where if there, these new online platforms wouldn't be available, TikTok, mm -hmm. YouTube, uh, Facebook, if all these platforms weren't available, they would never be able to become the stars that they have become. So you have to take that into in consideration as well. As a government, it's not your job to regulate everything to death. It's also you're there to take new opportunities and allow our art entrepreneurs in Canada to grow and on some of those platforms. And that's what these platforms have done. And that's what some of what Bill C-11 is about, is to shut that down. And with the government controlling things, you don't get all of those different voices, the, the voices that might have something new, something interesting to, to come into. And look, look at it, most cable packages, if you still subscribe to cable TV. You have, from the garden ch channel to the home garden channel, you have every variety to your old network, mm -hmm. where they have the sitcoms and the news, commercials in between. You have your variety. You also have kind of the other kind, you know, Prime and Netflix and all of that. But these, these choices provide opportunities for new people to get into the game, to be able to produce that content. And if you look at the music industry specifically, something the government hasn't really been in, look at all the varieties of music you have. And it's a great thing because the government isn't telling people what to listen to. Yeah, I was going to say, don't give me any ideas, Jamie. Yeah, the government, right. the government yes, shouldn't, yeah, should no, not get no. into music. But I think you're right you got to ask yourself, why does the government keep on bringing more and more legislation mm -hmm. forward to clamp down on people and clamp down on what people can see, clamp down on what people can own with Bill C-21? Yes. So those questions are out there, and I think we need to have a more open and free country and, and give people more opportunities and more choices on what they want to see, watch, what they want to listen to, not less. And that's what you get with the conservative principles of freedom and having access to more information instead of less. And I think that's a big contrast between where we will go when we form government and where this Liberal government has gone over those past last long eight years. It's been a very long eight years. Now, there have been people who have been getting very wealthy through this. There are a lot of people who are hurting, but the ones that are getting wealthy are well connected to government, well lawyered and well lobbied, right? You get the contract, to do whatever it is you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. whether it gets done or not, doesn't matter, but you are
connected because you're making the right donations, you're making the right friends, you're, you're talking to the right people. Yeah. Well, we had a debate about this, and we're talking about the McKinsey contract for $120 million to well-connected liberal insiders. And I asked the question because outside consulting has gone up a lot, mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars under this government. And the public service has gone up, about 30% under this government. So I asked Mark Gerritsen, one of our favorite liberals <laughs> that talks all the time in the House, have Canadians seen better services with all this increase in outside third-party consulting and a larger public ser service? And he couldn't answer that question because I believe Canadians have seen slower passports, way slower when it comes to immigration and getting your, your mm -hmm. files processed, slower when it comes to getting into airports and out of airports, which are fake li which federally <laughs> regulated. They are. As much right? as the government likes to say they're not, yeah, they as are. As much yeah. as they want to say it's not our, yeah. our problem, all these things do fall under their portfolios. That's right. And they continue to fail Canadians. And that's why it's been such a long, long eight years. Especially when you're trying to get back to life, trying to get back to normal. And, and it, it, it just every roadblock, but it's, it's the government and the services they're supposed to provide. And when you bloat the bureaucracy like that, it slows down progress. It slows down innovation and, and job creation. When there's more forms to fill out, more paperwork to get through, more regulations and rules to follow, it slows down the ability to have this economic recovery that we actually want. And we haven't even hit on agriculture and their 30% yes. reduction of fertilizer. Well, let's talk about that. And all the problems that they put in, the roadblocks that they put in for agriculture producers. Our shadow minister, John Barlow, just gave a great speech in the House of Commons and saying, the one thing that says is the biggest roadblock to success in the agriculture sector today is that Liberal government. Mm -hmm. Everything that they've done, whether it be tripling the carbon tax, whether it be the fertilizer tariffs, first of all, then the fertilizer reduc reduction targets they have, it's hurting our agriculture producers. When the world right now is crying for a safe supply of food during a global food insecurity situation, mm -hmm. Canada's the answer and their own government's getting in their way. Well, one day way to bring down prices is to actually increase supply. So wouldn't we want more of our farmers producing domestic food? Well, the answer should obviously be yes. yes. But the reality is it's not actually happening because of the rules, regulations, and red tape being imposed every single day on these farmers, on these producers that are making it near impossible to do business where you have to have a second job off farm or you don't get into it altogether because you just know you're not going to be able to make a living. Well, that and the uncertainty. uncertainty. Yeah, the uncertainty. Like this right. government changes the goalposts on our producers all the time and they arbitrarily pick different dates. Say, if you've had good processes since 2018, you get credit for it. 2017, 2016, sorry. Our agriculture producers are the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Out of our total emissions in Canada, agriculture is only responsible for 8%. Most other jurisdictions are 25% or higher for their agriculture emissions. So we're doing a great job already. We just need the government to be proud of our agriculture sector, proud of our producers, and champion what they've done so far on the world stage. Because Canadian agriculture isn't a problem to emissions and global food insecurity. It's the answer. You have so many countries right now that are trying to figure out their energy portfolio. A lot brought into the, the green Marxist agenda into Europe. You look at many countries that had to stockpile energy just to keep people warm over the winter in Europe and, and, and the process in which led to that, the steps that led to that. You had an energy portfolio that should have been A plus B, it was B minus A, and when you rely on technology that hasn't been fully implemented or tested to the standards that we need, to the generation capacity we need, you get problems and that's what's happening in Europe. They're going begging other countries. The Chancellor of Germany came to Canada. Japan, Japan came to Canada. The Prime Minister basically said uh, thanks but no thanks, which I don't, I don't know where government decided they, have a biz they know business better than the marketplace, which is absolutely incredible. And then they go to Qatar and other countries to sign these deals to produce the energy that their company and their country needs. It, it is the fact that we can't get anything built in this country is hurting productivity. The lack of certainty, the lack of investment, it is, it is hurting this country in a very big way. So when you take away the natural resource industry, what are we relying on? We, we're relying on real estate, really, to, to, to keep 
things moving. It, it is very scary. Well, I think that's the frustrating part with this woke prime minister and cabinet is they turn down energy deals for good, clean, environmentally produced energy in Canada for jurisdictions that don't have the same standards we have. So in essence, by them turning down deals with Germany and Japan, they have actually made the environmental situation mm -hmm. worse because other countries don't produce it as environmentally friendly as we do. And I think that's the most frustrating point for everyone across Western Canada, in the ag sector, in the energy sector. These woke cabinet ministers and prime ministers walk out and pretend they care about the environment and then don't allow the energy sector egg sector in our country to do that job and lower emissions across the world and then they let them pr get produced in other jurisdictions. And I think that's where there's a huge disconnect between what they're saying and what is actually happening in reality. Well these same woke ministers are decrying wealth, decrying opportunity, but they'll have no problem hoarding it for themselves. They sure. have no issues about taking from other people and keeping it for themselves. Or jumping on a plane, going to junkets and Absolutely. spending $6,000 a night in a hotel. Yeah, they, they have no problem. But they'll decry it if you have it, right? Wealth is bad. If you have it, you should give it to me and I'll distribute it as I see fit. But I'll never stop living the good life. You think the people that went to Davos are eating crickets? No, they're eating the best cuts of meat. They're staying at the best hotel. They're having the best of luxury has to offer, mm -hmm. while at the same time coming up with new ways to impose rules, regulations, red tape, and restricting the movements of people. I think they're coming up with new ways to make people poorer. They are. This is, this is like uh, equal levels of misery, right? This is what they're all about. You, you let us super smart people figure it out. We'll have a handful of companies that provide certain services. There'll be no competition. We won't have to really adjust price and make it any better service for the people. And we'll just reap the profits, pay off government, and we'll just have this very happy, merry place where all the, the common folk just push it uphill and get out of bed and do their thing and we'll live high life. As uh, our leader says, the have yachts yeah. and the have nots. And that's what it's come to, unfortunately. Warren, as you know, we have to get out of here because question period's coming up. Yeah. But uh, the guests always get the last word. Have a, have, uh, have your at it. Well, I just want to say thank you, Jamie, for having me on. It's great to talk with all your viewers. And please keep listening because the Conservatives are going to fight for you every step of the way and make sure that prosperity is for all Canadians, not the connected liberal insiders. Absolutely. And we need more. Canada needs more Saskatchewan. Absolutely. We appreciate the flag. We appreciate your time <laughs> as well. That's Warren Steinle, Member of Parliament for Regina Louvan. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this program. We know there's two people in your social media network that would be open to hearing this message. And of course, if they can't watch or listen to it right this second, they can download it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it. It is out there. Until next week, remember, low taxes, less governments, more freedom. That's the blueprint.